doing it. Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of Digital Fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn. Today's deck is an oldie but a goodie. This is a deck that we've used in previous standards. It is a budget brew just by chance. We didn't design it to be a budget brew, but it just happens to be very, very budget friendly, and it gets a ton of wins. It consistently has over a 90% win rate. Uh, before we talk about the deck, which has a ton of new upgrades from Wilds of Eldraine, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons over at patreon.com slash quarantined Capricorn. That's Yuck Fuzi, Noah Vincent, uh, Squirrel, and Brittany at the Brew Crew Elite tier. And then, of course, our forever CPU savior, Terrence Rohrbach. Thank you guys so much for your contributions and for helping to helping to me keep this channel going. Uh, this deck is called Yoshin Devourer. And this is an upgrade to our Boros Artifact Aggro deck that we've used, like I said, in past seasons. But the new cards that are coming from Wilds of Eldrain make it absolutely crazy. Uh, Soul Cauldron, Agatha Soul Cauldron, um, Lord Ginger, Sor Sir Ginger, sorry, uh, Ginger Brute coming back. Uh, we'll talk about the whole deck in just a second. Before that, make sure like, subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment down below if you think there's a better budget brew in Standard, because I don't think there's a better deck in Standard that's as budget as this one is, but I'm all ears if you think there is. I think this deck is absolutely crazy. Also, catch me live Monday through Friday over on Twitch so you can catch a glimpse of me behind the scenes while I'm brewing up a storm. That's uh, twitch.tv slash quarantined Capricorn, because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming. Let's talk about this deck. All right, this deck is called Yoshin Devour. It is an upgrade to Yoshin Skyblazer, which was an upgrade to Yoshin Cruise Missile, which was an upgrade to Yoshin Bulldozer. Uh, this deck has always been insane, and it's always been very rare light. There are a few one-ofs, but you can easily cut them uh, and still have this deck perform very, very well. Uh, we're going to start at the bottom of the curve, and then we're going to talk about the new cards at the end. So we've got four Swooping Lookout, Early creature, counts as an artifact, gives us evasion. One Skrelv to protect our dudes and also give us evasion. Four Mishra's Research Desk because it counts as an artifact and it digs for cards twice. Experimental Synthesizer because it does the exact same thing with a little bit of an upside where if we sack the Synthesizer uh, to something else, we can still dig for a card, which is really nice. We've got four Gold Hound, which is another card that counts as an artifact. We can sack it for a mana if we need it, but it can also give First Strike and Menace to our one copy of Eater of Virtue. Uh, we have one of these in here because it's legendary, but if we happen to get it, we can equip it to a creature, make that creature have, you know, plus two power, plus get First Strike and Menace from the Gold Hound if we had it on a Gold Hound, or get the Flying and Vigilance from a Swooping Lookout if we had it on a Swooping Lookout. Uh, and what's really cool is if we equip it to a Gold Hound, we can then sack the Gold Hound for a mana to immediately put the Gold Hound under the Eater of Virtue and then use that mana for whatever we might need to, maybe re-equip the Eater of Virtue to something else. And now whatever we equip it to has that, that First Strike and Menace. We've also got four copies of Kamano Faces Kakazan. Um, it's going to come down as an enchantment, it's going to generate us some value, and it's going to stick as a creature. Uh, but what's important about all of these to note is they're all artifacts or enchantments, mostly artifacts, and that's because we're running four copies of Machiko's Reign of Truth. So the idea here is we get down early evasive creatures, we go super wide with artifacts and to a certain extent enchantments, and then Machiko's Reign of Truth comes out of nowhere, gives one of our evasive creatures like plus 10, and we just swing in for the win and our opponent never sees it coming. Uh, this deck has been very effective at doing that for a very long time, but the new cards we'll get to in a minute just really push it over the top. We've also got four Yosha Declares War because it gives us an artifact and an enchantment on chapter one. That uh, artifact on chapter one will be a flyer, so even though it's only a 0-2, we can easily buff that card up in later turns and swing for the win. Uh, chapter two of this card lets us uh, 
get a little bit of creature removal into the deck without having to get rid of any of our synergies to make place uh, make space for it. So that's really good. And then chapter three turns one of our artifacts into a 4-4, which we can target the O2 Thopter if we want, so we can swing in for four flying, or we can target the Gold Hound or the Swooping Lookout if we still want that Menace or that Flying uh, for whatever we're swinging in as a 4-4. But there's also a little bit of value we can get from just turning one of our non-creature artifacts into a 4-4 if the board is clear and just smashing through for an extra 4 along with our creatures that are on the board. So this card is super versatile. We've also got four Patchwork Automaton, and this is kind of the backbone of the deck. This thing comes down on two, usually after Kamano faces Kakazan, so it can get the counter from that. And usually it's a long time before our opponent can deal with this. If we're on the play, by the time they have three mana for a cutdown or a shock uh, in order to pay the ward two as well, it's usually up to, to a 3-3 three, three and can't be cut down or shocked anymore. And then by the time, you know, we get up to... to turn four where he could maybe lightning strike it for three damage now it's at least a four four so it's always outpacing our opponent's removal and it gets to a point where we're not slowing down we're going wide every single turn but they have to spend an entire turn just to play a removal spell that will actually hit the automaton and the ward so they kind of waste a turn dealing with the automaton meanwhile we have an entire board that's still going ham on the opponent's face so that tempo loss is good enough a lot of times to just kind of put us so far ahead that we can't lose. But we're going to talk about the new cards in this deck because they're absolutely nutty. We have one copy of Surge Injure. This is legendary, um, so we are going to keep it to one, but I could understand if you wanted to go up in copies on this. Uh, comes in as a 3-1 for 2 mana. If our opponent controls a Planeswalker, it has Hexproof, it has Trample, and it has Haste which is nuts. This is just a Planeswalker Assassin. If our opponent casts uh, Wandering Emperor the turn before, we just slam this, immediately swing in at the Wandering Emperor and kill it. And even if they have a blocker, we have Trample. They can't stop it with removal because of the Hexproof, so they have to block it. The Trample will still probably kill the Wandering Emperor, and we probably have ways to just sacrifice some artifacts here or there in order to buff up Sir Ginger, Ginger to a point where Sir Ginger is going to survive the attack as well. So that gets pretty crazy. It's, it's second ability here is whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you put a plus one plus one counter on Sir Ginger and Scry one. Both of these abilities are way better than you'd think. The Scry one in particular is better than you'd really expect. But um, we're constantly sacking artifacts in this build anyway, so this thing's going to get big. It's going to scry us that much quicker to our Machiko's Reign of Truth or whatever answer we happen to need in the moment. And honestly, the deck just runs like an engine as soon as Sir Ginger is out. But if that wasn't enough, you can also pay to tap Sack Sir Ginger to gain life equal to its power. And if you're racing against another aggro deck, a lot of times being able to sack this for five or six life is just nutty and makes all the difference in the world uh, for for racing your opponent and getting there before them. So this card is just insane. And like I said, I could see adding more copies if you want. It's legendary and we have a lot of things we want to fit into the deck, so I'm only going with one here. But whenever we do happen to see it, I am super happy about it. We've also got one copy of Agatha's Soul Cauldron for similar reasons. It is a legendary card. Um, it counts as an artifact. So when we play it, it's going to trigger the automaton. It's going to count as something for Machiko's Reign of Truth so that we can go even wider. Um, but its ability is super good. Even if we have nothing in the graveyard to hit with it, no extra value, we can remove our opponent's creatures from their graveyard to put counters on our guys. And that alone is pretty good in a deck like this that is just trying to smash the opponent's face in as quickly quickly as possible and usually it's just one or two points of life away from closing out the game um on on a very specific turn in the mid game and just need that extra little bit of damage to get there and agatha's soul cauldron synergizes with everything in the deck because it's an artifact and is also able to provide that extra value but if you're able to exile one of your own creatures with Agatha's Soul Cauldron, you can actually set yourself up with some really sick abilities 
that kind of take it over the top. So the way this card works is it lets you spend mana as though or mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control, which comes up once in a while, but not often if we're, if we're exiling our opponent's creatures. Uh, creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with the Soul Cauldron. So we can steal our opponent's activated abilities if they have creatures in the yard we can remove, but we can also get activated abilities from all of our creatures onto all of our other creatures that are still in play, and that's pretty key. Uh, we just tap it. We don't have to pay any mana, exile any card from a graveyard, and whenever a creature is exiled this way, we put a counter on whatever we want. So if we're exiling our own Gold Hound, we're giving all of our creatures the ability to sack four mana, and sometimes that can really matter. If we're exiling Skrelv, we give all of our creatures the ability to protect each other with Skrelv's ability, which is kind of insane. And then of another new card that we have in here that we have four copies is really the bread and butter of why we're adding Agatha's Soul Cauldron, Ginger Brute. This is from original Throne of Eldraine. It's a reprint in Wilds of Eldraine. One mana artifact creature, 1-1 one, one haste. You can pay one to make it unblockable except by creatures with haste, which typically... If the opponent's playing haste, they're playing aggro, and this deck can actually outgrow their aggro decks anyway. And if they're not playing haste, then they're probably playing bigger creatures if they're not playing aggro. And then this ability to be unblockable, except if they have haste, actually matters a ton. So this guy's going to be useful kind of in any situation. If we're up against aggro, we're just racing them, and this guy is good because of the haste. And if we're up against some sort of mid-range situation, maybe we're not racing them, but they have really good blockers, and we can just get through. We also have the uh, extra ability of being able to pay to tap and sack the Ginger Brute to gain three life, which is also good if we're racing another aggro deck. Uh, it can sometimes make the difference between our, our deck pulling out the win rather than theirs. But if this is in our graveyard, we can exile it with the Soul Cauldron, and now all of our creatures that have counters on them have the ability to pay one and become unblockable except by creatures with haste, which is just insane. We can make our patchwork automaton. We don't even need to put the counter on the automaton. We can put the counter from Soul Cauldron on a different creature because the uh, automaton probably already has a bunch of other counters on it already. So a lot of times this Soul, Dr Soul Cauldron can come down, exile a Ginger Brute, and all of a sudden you have multiple creatures that can be unblockable that turn except by creatures with haste from out of nowhere and your opponent doesn't see it coming. So in a way, this Soul Cauldron acts as another way we can add an evasive threat to the field that we can pump up with the Reign of Truth or the Yosha Declares War Chapter 3. So Soul Cauldron is absolutely awesome. Ginger Brute, four copies as another creature that's evasive that counts as an artifact and that has haste and gets in there for extra damage early in the game before they have a blocker down. Absolutely insane in this deck. We've also got two Glass Casket. Uh, this complements our four copies of Yosha Declares War. It's nice to have a six card removal package uh, for the deck, and the two Glass Caskets are good for that. Uh, the Yosha Declares War is better as a four of because it synergizes with our deck so much more and provides more of the fuel that the deck needs for other things it's doing and just gives you that, uh, that removal as a bonus and because we go so wide with artifacts a lot of times that chapter 2 removal on Yoshi Declares War can actually hit really big things like maybe a Shieldred or even an Atraxa I think in one game we hit an Atraxa um, so that's that's super valuable but to complement it having the two glass caskets is nice because it does deal with early threats that cost three or less but it also is an artifact so it's the only other way in standard right now that we can play removal and get a trigger off Automaton, and have something that counts as an artifact for Machiko's Reign of Truth for going wide. So, absolutely great as just a two of in this deck to shore up our six package removal. Um, and then we have one Restless Boovoak by Bivoak. Uh, leave me a comment down below how this is supposed to be pronounced because I have no idea. I'm just gonna call it uh, Shopvac. It's a Hoover. We'll go with that. Uh, we just one of these because it comes into play tapped and a lot of times this deck wants to be able to just play something on turn one and just keep going but it is good enough uh, to include one copy if you have one 
It'll tap for one red or one white, so it helps us fix. But the most important thing here is we can pay three mana to turn it into a 2-2 creature. And whenever it swings, it gets to put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It can target itself with the counter. So for three mana, it can swing as a 3-3. Three, three that is modified, that can also have the bonuses from anything you've removed with Agatha's Soul Cauldron, which is pretty sick, but we also get the upgraded uh, sort of versatility of being able to put that counter on something else. So if we want to swing with the Boovac, buy Vuvac, Hoover Shopvac, um, put the counter on another creature so that that creature is maybe getting the... Uh, the activated abilities of our soul cauldron we can do a lot of crazy things that kind of synergize together and i think one copy of this card in here because if we hit the one we're happy to see it we're not ever going to have enough mana to swing with two of these in one turn so we don't really need the extra copies but just like a lot of the cards in this deck having one of this alongside one soul cauldron one surge ginger one eater of virtue one screlve it's like we're so happy to see any one of those cards alongside any other one of those cards. Um, but if we ever see like two of one of those cards instead of something else, it would feel kind of bad. So it feels really good to have these like five one of, I guess six or maybe seven with Mirex, uh one ofs that we're happy to see pop up. We never have to worry about having two in our hand, but every single one of them contributes to the deck in a meaningful way. The deck is absolutely the best it's ever been. It's still super budget. The rares can easily be replaced with other cards. Uh, the most notable rares you're going to want, Sundown Pass and Battlefield Forge, uh, four copies of this because we do need the white, but we consistently need our red. And if we play too many white sources that can't tap for red as well, and we end up having to miss out on like double spelling or triple spelling on certain turns because of it, it feels super bad. But other than that, a lot of these one-ofs can be replaced. And the deck just slams, man. Right now, this upgraded version is at a 90% win rate for me, and it's absolutely nuts. Uh, we just zip through these games so fast. I think these are the quickest games we've had on a deck tech in a while, but that's just that's just how the deck rolls. So uh, without further ado, let's see that happen. Let's check out those games. Uh, I don't think we can keep this. This one we can keep. We'll toss back the swooping lookout. Or maybe one of the Patchwork Automatons. Yeah. I think two is a little bit greedy. So we'll go Thrawn Portal for white. Get Skrelv out there. Then we'll get the Automaton out there. Next turn we can play Swooping Lookout. Mishra's Research Desk. Should have just attacked the scroll, probably. Although, mm, there's nothing they have that can do three damage for one mana, right? We'll just swing with both. Topiary Stomper. That's going to be way too slow. If we top deck a land here, oh god. Heaven help you. Nope. It's okay though. Synthesizer. Maybe we'll get lucky and hit something we can play. Nope. Let's, uh, let's crack this and try to hit a mountain. So that we can play the Kamano Faces Kakasami. Hey, there we go. Alright, swing for five, put him at ten. Next turn, Machiko's pumps six. We swing for eleven. All right, we win. We win.
be one. Choose green. Seven for thirteen. Goodbye. Good night. This is going to be dangerous, but we're going to keep it. We're going to gold hound. I was thinking about ginger brooding, but... Alright, he clearly doesn't have cut down. Tenacious underdog. Work a tom tom. Swing one. Do you have a cut down? I hope you got a cut down. Jinji is on the board. Evolved sleeper. Duress my glass casket, I assume. Kind of a bummer. Sack to, for mana to sack this, and then Sir Ginger goes up to a 5 3. And we get to scry too. Uh, are you dumb? We have two first strikers. He's like, wait, what? First strike? Yes. First strike.
We almost have lethal. We almost have lethal. How did I not anticipate that? How did I fuck that up? Just swung with the big guy. All right, apparently he's going to scoop. We'll keep this. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. Synthesizer. Another synthesizer. Sure. And a land. I'm fine with it. Although I don't think we're gonna top deck a creature to play with the Kamado, which kinda sucks. Can't cut down the automaton anymore. Flesh George. Flesh George. Now, Flesh George is a little bit scary because. If you can somehow get rid of the glass casket. He gets back a really big one. And that is no good. Play Shelly. Start with cracking an experimental synthesizer. Let's see what we hit. Research desk. though. Just gotta use a two mana removal spell to kill the automaton and completely tap out to do it. Still goes to six. We've got a full board for next turn. Keep seven. Alright, we'll do Goldhound. 
Mosswood Dread Knight. Automaton. Swing for one. if we can. So it can get through. It can take the counters off the automaton, but it's going to cost two mana to do it. So now it can't. Unblockable. Get in for nine. Which means we've got lethal next turn. All three of these can become unblockable. Mary 115. One land and it's a tap land. How original. How original. Mano, if we get lucky and hit another land, we'll patchwork automaton. Otherwise, we'll just play gold hound. Counter spell? And no counter spell? You are shit out of luck. I think we're too fast for you, Mary. We've got both of those on the field uncontested right now. you got all right you're taking it means we have potentially lethal next turn if I play these two things we've got 13 damage on the board all 
right? That's eight. No blocks. That's 13. I think I'd rather be safe than sorry. So let's do this. Sack the gold hound. To play the research desk. To put even more on. And then we can swing. What you got? feeling it was going to be something like that. Well, we can give our creature plus one plus one in first strike. Agatha's soul cauldron gets us the win because you are greedy. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there. And if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately, that's somewhere up that way. Also, subscribe, circle below, do all the things.